What are the lifestyle choices that are keeping us sick, causing flares, causing all these symptoms to happen? And what are the lifestyle choices that are going to keep us healthy for the long term and help us achieve clinical remission? What's up, guys? My name is Dane Johnson, the CEO of Crohn's Guys Lifestyle. And today we're going to be talking about the things that harm your gut barrier, harm your gut more, increase the chance of IBD, IBS, or symptoms, and what are the things to protect you against those issues. We're going to deep dive. And if you like today's content, please like, subscribe, and please comment below because I want to help you get real results and I'll be sure to make video on your questions that get the most likes. So first off, what is harming the gut? I don't care if you've been diagnosed with IBD, IBS, or any of it. It doesn't matter because the human gut gets injured by these things. We have to work hard to get these out of our body because we could try to eat the right thing, try to live in the right area, try to get home cooked meals. But if we still are getting exposed to these problems, the problem of IBD, IBS will persist. So we need to be able to focus on getting rid of glyphosate. Glyphosate is an antibiotic that we spray on our foods that has been shown to cause the big C and also cause damage to the mucous membrane to destroy the beneficial bacteria in our gut lining, to be linked with cellular toxicity, damage to every single cell, organ, ligament, energy in our body. Glyphosate is pure toxin, and it is found in our processed foods. We commonly spray it with the dirty dozen. I'm talking strawberries, I'm talking spinach, I'm talking food that is in our local grocery store that is sprayed with this antibiotic pesticide, herbicide, that is detrimental to our gut health. And as long as we keep ingesting it, we're going to have leaky gut. We're going to have microbiome issues. We're going to have toxins leaking into the bloodstream. We're going to increase chance of cellular damage and increase chance of life-threatening disease. Glyphosate has to go. If you're working on getting rid of your glyphosate, one of my favorite things is to take a product called Ion Biome, which helps protect your gut lining from the damage of gliadin found in processed gluten and also from glyphosate foods, one of my favorite products you can take. Number two, alcohol. I know we love it in our society, but alcohol is damaging in every single way. Now, I want to highlight here beer. This is destroying the gut barrier. Beer is one of the highest products in our culture of glyphosate, the very worst thing we can put. The highest dose you're going to get is usually found in a beer. I'm talking Bud Light, Coors Light, all the lights have the glyphosate we got to get rid of, all right? And they also, alcohol is going to put pressure on your liver. It's going to be damaging to the gut lining. It's going to be damaging to the microbiome. It's going to put a lot of pressure in your body to release those toxins. It's going to hurt your ability to heal and get stronger when you're sleeping and you're detoxifying. Get rid of the alcohol if you can. If you need it, I want you to do only organic tequila or an organic gluten-free vodka or dry farms wine if i ever drink which i don't dry farms wine is one of my best that's going to keep you in ketosis glyphosate free low amounts of ppms and sulfites these are going to be really important so make really smart decisions if you're going to drink alcohol but it is absolutely harming your gut barrier number three is nsaids non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs yes they can help with headaches yes they can help with knee pain and back pain but they injure the gut lining, they promote leaky gut, and over time, if we continue to take them, it can lead to further problems, gastritis, ulcerations, microbiome imbalances, SIBO, all can be connected with NSAIDs. So we want to start reducing them where we can. Maybe we can use a little bit of PEA to help with pain. Maybe we can use a bit of magnesium to help with headaches. Magnesium glycinate is what I love. I personally take 600 milligrams of B glycinate at night. I'm going to put a link below. You can see the one I personally take at night. Maybe you're also doing a new one I've been looking into, research purposes only. Check out a product called Blue Scorpion Venom. Oh my gosh. What did he say? What did Dane say? Check it out. It's pretty cool. So all of those things might be able to help with pain. They might be able to help with headaches, minerals, hydration. They might be able to help with arthritic pains. As you fix the leaky gut, it can also help reduce those arthritic pains. So is there a root issue that you're not treating, which is why you need NSAIDs? I'm going to leave you with there. Chronic stress. You know, I'm still guilty of this sometimes. We have to have a time in the day when we get out of fight or flight, when the adrenaline isn't pumping through our body, when our heart rate's not sitting at 170, thinking about our problems. We've got to find a time to sleep, to rest, to be in peace, to be away from EMF. And stress can be many things, guys. 
What's damaging the gut? It could be the food. It could be electromagnetic fields. It could be the Bluetooth. It could be the blue light in your room. If you're someone sleeping with a huge TV in your room and falling asleep to some massive TV with some dramatic shoot 'em up movie, you're in a state of stress when you sleep. We've got to reduce the stress. So I want you to strategically think about when your body gets complete rest from any of these stressors, people, food, air, EMFs, and is able to restore and rejuvenate itself. And that's going to reduce the chance of your gut getting worse or developing even a worse type of disease going on. Next is a big one you've heard of, refined carbs and sugars. Look, the candies, the bakery, the processed flour, and the processed breads are only injuring your gut. The way they're made, the lack of fermentation, the lack of bran and germ, the increase in any kind of chemicals to make it the way it is, is just going to cause more damage and more damage. And these types of carbs and sugars, they feed into the dysbiosis. They feed into damage to the gut lining. So when you take things like glyphosate or too many NSAIDs for too long that destroy your gut lining, then you feed it sugar and refined carbohydrates. That feeds all the candida to overgrow. That feeds all the bacteria to overgrow. Now you're dealing with small intestine fungal overgrowth. Now you're dealing with small intestine bacteria overgrowth. Get my drift? We've got to divorce this fake life that Western world has taught us and get back to real living. Get back to real food, okay? Industry gluten foods that we talked a little bit about. The problem is it might not just be gluten, but the way gluten is made in Western world. When gluten is made, it's not properly fermented. It has plenty of chemicals, usually high in glyphosate. It's got way too high of what's called gliadin. Gliadin is the active protein in gluten that when it's too high, it can tend to be damaging to the gut lining. And when you have a weak microbiome, weak digestion, right? A weak fire up here and you have a lot of gliadin with a lot of chemicals in that food and a lot of sugar from that white flour, this is a recipe for disaster to completely damage your gut lining. One of the worst things you can do. So again, Ion Biome could help with that a little bit, but I want you to get rid of that gluten in Western world. You might get away with it, homemade, fermented in Italy, but not in America. It just doesn't work. So always toxic, always try to get rid of that stuff. This is why the famous diets like the paleo diet or the autoimmune protocol diet or the SCD diet, specific carbohydrate diet, got famous is because they were treating some of this stuff that they knew was injuring people. So instead of being on a restrictive diet for the rest of your life, realize what you're trying to target and what is toxic and poisonous to your body, and it's going to change your life here. Now, let's jump into the good. What can we do about it? I always like to say, that a great defense is a fantastic offense. But as you play defense, maybe a lot of you are already playing this defense. You're saying, that's great, Dane, but what can I do to actually heal? Now let's jump into some of the stuff you can do to get a healing response beyond taking out all the bad stuff. Number one is try to get it from the local farm, especially we see things like a peel where they're putting it on organic foods. Now we want to go to organic farms to get real food that's nutrient dense, has high polyphenols, high healthy amounts of fiber, high amounts of carbs and proteins, and a good ratio of macros in there. Number two is we want to, as we talk about stress management, I love something called the Sensate. I use my Sensate in the morning to help me be able to meditate, to help engage my parasympathetic rest and digest healing mode. I like to be able to calm down my nerves, give my body a time to relax, and I like to do it usually in the morning when I wake up to get ready for the day. So what are you doing to help nurture your nervous system? Sensei could be great for you. I'll put a link below where you guys can get a discount on that and check out a Sensei if you're like me and you want helps engage your parasympathetic. Two could be grounding, walking outside, getting sunlight, meditation. It can be sitting down and reading a book that is inspiring and fruitful and optimistic can all be great ways to nurture your nervous system. You need to engage the parasympathetic, okay? Parasympathetic, rest and digest. How do you know if you're in the parasympathetic? Key hack that'll change your life. Get yourself salivating. If you aren't salivating, you're not in the parasympathetic. When you're salivating, when your heart rate is low, that's usually when your body has the ability to increase natural digestive enzymes and also get into a healing state to remove toxins, to remove bad energy, even to have a bowel movement can even help with constipation. Next, herbal teas. If you're on a budget and you're looking for a way to heal quick and easy, hot water with herbs is going to be the best thing you can do. I'm talking ginger, chamomile, put a little apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, a little sea salt. You can get electrolytes. You can get antimicrobials. You can get natural herbs that act as digestive bitters like peppermint, okay, or ginger or fennel. 
to help increase your natural digestibility to make sure you can break down the foods you're eating. This is especially important if you're seeing undigested food in the stool or you're getting low pancreatic enzymes in your stool analysis or you're somebody who has poor drainage pathways. You're always swollen. That could be a sign of weak lymphatic drainage. You're someone who has high liver enzymes or liver problems in the past. Man, dandelion root, milk thistle. When you get these herbs free form, they're one-tenth the cost of a supplement. I'll tell you, it's one of the biggest hidden secrets you can get. And warm water is always going to be better than cold water. Great key hack. Stop drinking the cold water. Drink your hot water. Put it in some herbs that are going to specifically enhance your gut health like we discussed. It's going to change your life. Next, beneficial bacteria. We need to get good, natural, beneficial bacteria in here. I'm talking maybe a probiotic, like a single strain, like natrium powders can be great. Also, something like Saccharomyces boulardii, yeast that could help, or you know, adding in certain types of fermented foods. Sauerkraut when you're ready. Yogurt when you're ready. Kefir when you're ready. The problem with some of these fermented foods like those is if you have a histamine problem or you have a lot of bacterial overgrowth, it can cause a little bit of herx because it will cause a little bit of fight in your gut. So go slow, work with a practitioner. If you need help, I can help build a plan for you and customize how you're going to add all these things in and make it sense for you. Free one hour IBD session below. It's on me. Let's deep dive in your case when you're ready to heal. And I'm going to make this all customized for you. So probiotics, fermented foods. This is a part of life. Every day, I had sauerkraut earlier today. I had a homemade yogurt with l ruteri earlier today. I had Natrin probiotics earlier today. It's a part of my kitchen. It's a part of my life to put beneficial bacteria in my body that can help balance inflammation, help with digestion, protect my gut lining, all right? Help me break down food more properly and keep out the bad guys. This is a lifestyle, not just a supplement. Curcumin, BPC, man, these are two of my favorite. Curcumin found in turmeric is an anti-yeast. A lot of people don't know that. Helping to regulate candida that might be proliferating from the colon into the small intestine. We call that small intestine fungal overgrowth. Curcumin, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer. It can calm down that gut lining so you can properly absorb nutrients. Curcumin also tends, a lot of it stays in the gut. So it's really good to get to the colon. You see these products out here talking about bioavailability of curcumin? Forget it. Get the curcumin that can stay in the gut, coat the gut, and make its way all the way to the large intestine. Change your life. And when your body's ready, when you do all these things, then I think Body Protective Compound 157 or KPV or lorazotide, these peptides can be really beneficial at restoring the gut so you can gain that weight. I use this I went from 123 pounds to 193 pounds as you see me today. 70 pounds I've gained since my lowest when I was chronically sick, fighting for my life with IBD. BPC is something I've used from time to time to help with that. Every once in a while, not every day can be important. And if you want to get your bakery back, if you're someone who wants to get your breads, you want to get your brownies, you want to get your cookies, make sure it's homemade. Mill your own flour will help you get a diverse amount of food that you could eat and also get a healing response. So look at these. These are going to help you heal. These are going to stop you from healing, and you can change your life. Happy healing.